Good morning. Uh, welcome to McDowell United Methodist Church. We have entered the 11th month of the year 2024. Can you believe it? Year is almost about to say goodbye to us. But with this ending, also we enter into months of celebrations and recognitions and also thanksgiving and praising the Lord for the greatest gift that he's sent to us in the form of his son. And all those uh, planning that we as McDowell Church do are already um, in your extended sheet of announcements. I was surprised to see extra sheet in our church bulletin, but I figured that, yeah, a busy time ahead. So we have choir practice uh, after the worship service, and they are also practicing uh, on the Wednesdays, so keep them in prayer because they are preparing for a beautiful Christmas cantata. If you remember from, from last year, they always bless us with good music. And uh, the United Methodist women have their um, monthly meeting on November 7th at Baby Bull, and Gina Meady is our hostess, and Deanna is our leader. Uh, 27th of when, uh, November, Wednesday evening, we have our Thanksgiving Eve service. And then other dates are here for you to remember and continue to participate in all those areas of ministry and celebrations and worship services that are ahead of us. Uh, any other announcement before we proceed further? Yeah, Don? Saying something. I guess we take Mary shaking her head yes. Everybody else? Everybody again? Yeah, sure. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all the same. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you for sharing that. Any other announcement? Yeah, Jeannie? Okay, thank you. And are we still doing the love gift offering today or are we done with that? Okay, okay, thank you for doing that. And nice to see kids are back in the church for their Sunday school, that's always exciting. Uh, let's look at our <coughs> volunteers for next Sunday. They are already listed here. Birthdays and anniversaries that we need to recognize. November 4th, Jeannie uh, Elliot celebrates her birthday. On the 6th, Jason e Elliot celebrates his birthday. And on November 9th, Ariel Mittingly celebrates her birthday. And there are no anniversaries. I think we have birthday people here. So let's sing happy birthday. <laughs> And may God continue to bless you with abundant mercies and grace and continue to be part of this ministry. Thank you for being uh, part of our celebration this morning. We also take time to extend our prayer and sympathies uh, to the family of Rita uh, Deemer, who is in God's kingdom now, and we keep the family in our prayers. Uh, any other announcements that are I'm missing? If not, then let's begin our worship service. If you are able to stand, we will read Call to Worship responsively. <coughs> <coughs> Come now with confidence to worship before our God, for we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. 
our God has set forth the way of life for us in Jesus Christ. This is the life of fulfillment and eternal glory. This is the time when we look at the glory of God in the cross and the empty grave and take pride that we do not have to suffer for our sins. Jesus has gained the heavenly kingdom for us. The symbols of his sacrifice in front of us remind us of the humility and love of Jesus with which he faced his death and resurrection. We come to take part in the victory of Jesus. He is our eternal savior. We were unworthy of his self-giving love, but the grace of God allows us to enter heavenly places and be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. And with that thought, our hymn of praise, number 110.
Our prayer of confession, shall we read this together, please? The blessings from heaven have been sent in our way to bless each other with the love of God. O oh, sing for joy, for our salvation has come. It is here amidst us. The moving of the Holy Spirit touches our hearts to do justice and live in harmony with each other. This is the season of thanksgiving to the Lord. Our words of assurance for a reflection and maybe weekly devotion. We strive to run the race and keep up the faith in Jesus. This is an everyday journey. Our lives get overrun by many challenges. The broken body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus provide the nourishment for our spirit. We are made more than conquerors due to the victory of Christ. Amen. May be seated, please. And our hymn of preparation is number 378, and we'll sing the first three verses only. And we have time of sharing our talent, and Jan is not here, so let's move into. Oh, you have, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure everybody needed that extra hour of sleep last night to be alert enough to figure out that I'm not Jan. <laughs> She'll be uh, sharing talent with you next week, so stay tuned for a better and improved version. Uh, reached into the Facebook vault of saved items to pull out a couple to, to share with you today. The first uh, goes like this. When God wanted to create fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he turned to himself. Then God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. If you take a fish out of water, it will die. And when you remove a tree from soil, it will also die. Likewise, when man is dis disconnected from God, he dies. God is our natural environment. We were created to live in his presence. We have to be connected to him because it is only in him that life exists. Let us stay connected to God. We re recall that water without fish is still water, but fish without water is nothing. 
The soil without a tree is still soil, but the tree without soil is nothing. God without man is still God, but man without God is nothing. And the second uh, was entitled 12 Choices for the Graduate, but this really could be 12 choices for each of us every day. And in the interest of time, I'm going to pull out just a few of those rather than all 12. One is choose your close friends wisely. Love everyone, but spread the majority of your time with people who encourage and challenge you to be your best. Character influences character, both good and bad. Another, choose to pursue your best over the best. The best is about external comparisons. Your best is about personal composition. Focus on maximizing the gifts you've been given. Another, choose to embrace struggles. Pruning is painful, but it's been a proven path to healthy growth for many of the world's greatest leaders. Every trial you face is an opportunity for growth. Choose to lose, leave things better than they were when you found them. This applies to any job, anything you borrow, and your interactions with people. And just a couple, three more. Choose to exceed expectations. Don't live life to merely meet minimum requirements. Give your best. Find the expectation, expectations and strive to exceed them. Opportunity will follow. Choose to embrace the journey. Most accomplishments in, that matter in life take time and effort and require you to engage in a process. Learn to embrace delayed gratification along with this process that comes with it, and your accomplishments will become much more fulfilling. And finally, choose to prioritize purpose over passion. Aspire to be great and pursue your passions, but not at the expense of the people God has placed in your path. Relationships are the foundation of your purpose in this life. Value every one of them as such. If all the kids would like to come forward for their time of fellowship, please. Joy is bringing a basket full of things. Let's see and open in what she has in it.
Joy, just for your information, I like my pretzels with Cool Whip and peanut butter. Yeah, I know my doctor has told me not to have too much salt, but who cares? Pretzels are salty, and I try to cover the guilt with Cool Whip, peanut butter. It works for me. Tastes good too. Uh, let's come together. Now, don't go and tell everybody out in the town, okay? Uh, let's come together for a time of prayer. Um, I think I have some of the names here. Uh, continue to uh, lift uh, Tina's his family, Tina and Tom, and uh, Rita's uh, uh, family, extended family at this time. And I wanted to know how is Philip doing, your brother-in-law? Okay, so our prayer and sympathies are with you. And how is Arlene progressing? Doing pretty good, okay. And who else has another? Yes. Yeah, they'll, they'll be in our thoughts and prayers. Sure. Yes, Tina. A lot goes on, a lot goes on in our church family, folks. Please keep in touch with each other. Please keep them in your prayers. Keep each other in your prayers. This prayer list that you have, it's just not a list, but it calls us to be an act of ministry that our prayers do matter. And see how many we have today that are in need of prayer. Yeah, Carol and then Jeannie. Okay, so keep the, this prayer request in your, yeah, Jeannie? Thanks for all these updates because it keeps us motivated to continue to lift our prayer requests to the Lord. And also a big day ahead for us on Tuesday. Um, keep that in mind. You have a right to vote. But at the same time, um, behind the curtain, we don't know what else is going on. So hopefully it will go peacefully and everybody has a conscience and everybody has their own standings and their uh, faith and political views. But just pray for each and everyone who gets to vote. 
it's our right to vote, and the person elected would be leading us for the next four years. And it's a big reflection of America on the world, and the world is watching how we vote, or what kind of person we are bringing into the leadership. Um, I, I am really praying hard, and I don't know under whose leadership this country will progress. That's a big issue for me. But whoever is chosen by the people, that's our political stand here, uh, whoever is chosen, I hope will have a special anointing from above so as to keep America as America, not change into anything else. Um, that's my two cents for the prayer list. Let's come together for our time of prayer. Dear Savior Lord, we realize that coming into your presence with joy and thanksgiving is a privilege. This is what you desire from all the believers for us to raise our voices in praise and humility. Because we know that this is the time when your grace and mercy are showered upon us. We who are created human beings, we are born in sin, and that nature always comes forth in so many different ways. Watch over us, O oh Lord. Each of us, we need your strength, your power. This morning especially, our hearts are heavy as we lift these loved ones, our church family members who have lost their loved ones um, for the eternity. But we know that each soul that you send into the world goes back to you. And it is with this assurance that we pray for all these family members that need your comfort and peace. May your embracing arms be around each of them. And yes, we do recognize the limitedness of our own lives, O oh Lord. You call us to uh, live our faith each day, and the turmoils of life do not allow us to stand and face what is coming in our way, especially when we stand all by ourselves. But it is the promise that you have given to us in Jesus Christ that we lay, when we lay our burdens on him, he yokes with us. He carries our burdens. He makes our lives light. And in this week of um, comfort and peace and sympathy and celebrations of lives that we have gone through, I pray that you will surround each person with your love. Also, Lord, I continue to pray for our church ministry, especially busy time ahead for us to have special uh, occasions and celebrations and times of thanksgiving. And as we progress towards the Advent season, we know there is a note of joy in the air. You call us to let the world know that your son has been born. A savior has been given to us. And it is all your doing. Also, Lord, we pray for our nation. And this week is uh, the critical time for each one of us to decide whom we choose as leader, who will lead us into the world view uh, amidst all the nations. And everybody looks towards America for a high standards of morals and truth, and also trust. And at this time, all of us who have the right to vote, we know that it is a call to duty. And the person elected would be the one who will uh, be chosen by you, maybe for good or bad, but we know that America exists for freedom, and it also welcomes human life in one way or the other. Help us to make the right decisions. And then after, um, aftermath that takes place, uh, 
allow us to be civilized about everything that comes out of this election. Heavenly God, I pray for our families that are central units of your witness. We are not perfect, but we have been called to be your children, to be like Jesus. And we forget that the divine nature of Christ lives in us through our faith, and it strengthens us each day to let Satan know that we have the heavenly bread to eat. We have your angels guarding us, protecting us. And also that you have given us the authority in the name of Jesus to drive evil from all around us. Allow us to believe in this and continue to grow in your grace. Hear our prayer, O Lord, because we ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time we need uh, help from our ushers, please, to continue our worship service as we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord. For the one who has become our Savior, O oh God, our Father, we have humble words of praise. These offerings are an extension of our gratitude and thanks offering in your presence. May the blessings continue to enrich our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated, please. This morning's scripture lesson is Luke chapter 6, verses 20 through 36. Once again, somehow God had his hands in here and it ties with Joy's children's story. And he lifted his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and they exclude you and revile you and spur your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. So their disciples did to the prophets. So their fathers did to the prophets, excuse me. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all the people speak well of you, and so their fathers did to false prophets. 
But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer also the other one. Who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from the one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, so do so to them. If you love those who love you, that benefits, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. This ends the reading of God's word. These verses in the Gospel of Luke, as we read through it, uh, takes us back to the fifth chapter of Matthew, where Christ, for the first time, uh, spoke to a crowd of more than 5,000 people. We call it Sermon on the Mount. And it begins with Beatitudes. And Luke builds upon that uh, aspect of um, Christ's teaching and extends it a little bit more. He offers us a challenge that we who are the children of God, how our conduct needs to be presentable to the people in a way that they know that we believe in the living God. The Beatitudes in Matthew are just simple teachings because it seemed like Christ was just reaching out to people, beginning his teaching ministry and allowing them to uh, kind of compare the law that was in their hands that they had forgotten to obey or follow because of the complexities. And he's trying to simplify it and give them a new version of everyday living. At the same time, Luke picks up on that and he goes a step further. He makes it more practical. Remember, Luke was a doctor, he was a physician and very well acquainted with human nature and human psychology and anatomy and physiology and everything else. So when he writes, his main focus is the empowerment that human life has in itself. And that empowerment comes to us from the Lord. And he begins his um, reflection or writings in these 16, 17 verses with Beatitudes. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And when you read them through, they are the same as in the Gospel of Matthew. He's trying to make it a challenge for the people because he presents its two sides of the Beatitudes. He just doesn't leave us with blessings, but he also says the other side of the coin is this. And you have to choose. You are blessed because you are the children of God. You know the kind of lifestyle God expects from you. And he gives us some pointers, what we can do. Feed the hungry, take care of the needy, walk that extra mile with people. If somebody abuses, uh, turn the other cheek towards them. Sometimes people have asked me, isn't that a sign of co uh, cowardness? And maybe it is from 
your vantage point of view, but may not be from the Christian point of view. And then he allows the blessings that come with each uh, Beatitudes. And he's sort of preparing us for a Christian life that is challenging, very much on the human level. How much do we, and how many times and for, to how many do we feed, take care of the poor, bless the needy, be with them, take care of the sick, and walk that extra mile with people? How do we um, surround the people that are mourning? They need comfort, and they need that special touch uh, of healing from you. And he is trying to bring it more the practical nature of human life. As teach, uh, Christ has preached over and over again as a, with the motive of servanthood in mind, Luke is challenging us that these blessings, these beatitudes, need to be part of your everyday living. So servanthood is not like a negative thing, but this becomes your nature. You take care of each other. You uh, take care of the needs of the community. You reach out to the people around you. And that is the practicality of your life. And then he also takes us one step further and he says, if you don't do, then he gives us the list of the other side of the coin and speaks to the rich, well-fed, those who laugh and who live their life on the praise from others and they expect that from others that they need to be praised. And Luke says, woe to you. Psalm 25 verse 8. There's not much time for me to go point by point. I'm just trying to cut short the reflection. But as we look towards the Lord, we know that we have been called to be like Jesus, live the life of Jesus. We are not Jesus, okay? We are not God. We are human beings. But we are called to live like Jesus. How do we do that? And Luke gives us the formula the steps, how you can raise yourself up, and then God will lift you up. Psalm 25 verse 8 says, good and upright is the Lord. That's the very nature of God, and that's why, therefore, he instructs sinners in his way. This is the kind of God that we believe in, good and upright. Now, if your parents are good and upright, do you think that they will mislead you to some other kind of lifestyle? They would like for you to be good and upright. That's our Heavenly Father, good and upright. And he instructs sinners in this way. He knows we are sinners. But he wants to give us education, knowledge, encouragement, so we can also lift ourselves up, good and upright. Psalm 107, first verse says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. He is always with us, no matter where we are, here or here or somewhere in between. God's love never leaves us. Why? Because he has sent his son in this world to be our savior. And as Luke says that you are called to enter the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving. Here we are, beginning the month of thanksgiving. What would be appropriate for me and for you to do is to remember that we are sinners. But because God is good, he calls us out of this goodness. He calls us out of the darkness of sin, all because he has sent his son to die on the cross. And when we enter his presence, the authenticity of our faith 
and the falseness of my faith is tested. God gives us power to be authentic when it comes to the faith that I live each day. And it is with this thought I invite you to uh, join in our communion this morning. If you will open on page 881, let's read the Apostles' Creed, our faith statement, which we have not done for a few months. Shall we read this? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue the worship of the table on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Page 13, we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord.
May the light of the Creator God touch your heart, instructing you in the way that leads to true life. May the light of the Savior fall gently on your shoulders, warning and strengthening you for service. May the light of the Holy Spirit guide your steps in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen.